R.J. Cobbs is back with Sean Smalls as Stein is ready to put the ball in the air. Has it teed up at the 35-yard line. Stein will now size it up, and we're ready to go on this gorgeous afternoon of college football here in Hamilton, New York, and Colgate. Stein's kick, a low kick, and that's going to be taken at the 25-yard line and getting up over the 35 with that ball. It was taken by an up man. So they're going to get it out to about the 37-yard line. Andy Resendi Gomes, a linebacker, working on special teams, gets out to the 37-yard line where it's going to be first down and 10. Tim Day... Actually uh, moving up in the record books at UMass today. He's moved into fifth place on the career passing list for UMass. And he goes past Greg Landry, former Detroit Lions quarterback, because of his day today. First down and 10. Day going to throw. Quick out, and he didn't have enough on that ball to get it in the air to Dominique Stewart. Trying to, trying to step along the line and make that throw and actually it's running back stepped right up there in the uh, in his way as he was trying to make that pass we'll see if he can shake off that first half a rough first half for him to say the least but still as we've stressed it's a very manageable deficit 10 points not a lot when you have a whole half of football left just needs to settle down and make some good throws and they also really need to establish the running game because Colgate has just shut that down completely Cobbs alone set back, man in motion. They're going to pitch it to Cobbs, looking for running room to the far side. Dollar will force him to the sidelines. There is a flag on the play as Cobbs goes out of bounds. That flag right near the line of scrimmage. There is a flag on the play. A procedure call against UMass. So that will back them up. And not the way they wanted to come out of the locker room and start this half. Incomplete pass and on second down, a penalty. So they put themselves in a pretty big hole here on second down. Third down. Well, there you heard it. They had an illegal formation. Too many men were on the line of scrimmage. And Colgate refuses the penalty. I'd like to call her. They, they held the runner to just about a one-yard gain. So brings up a third and about nine as opposed to a second and 15 and give them one chance to make the first down instead of two, I like to call there. Now, this is a big play for the Colgate defense. They can reestablish themselves immediately in the second half if they can keep the minimum from converging on third and long. Day looks out to his right. He's got a man open, and that man met immediately and then fumbles the football chance here for Colgate as they do recover the fumble and are going to take that ball all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Andrew Moore returns it for six points for the Raiders. And not only that, that's only one piece of bad news for the Minutemen. The other piece is that their quarterback, Tim Day, is down on the field right now with an apparent injury on that play. More holding that reception. Hopefully he can shake it off. Day is going off the field. We'll take a look and we'll see the pass. Out here to J.J. Moore. And he's able to reel it in. He tries to make something happen after the catch as he was short of the first down. And he's just stripped nicely there by number 14. Williams and then 12 there. Andrew Moore are able to come up with it and run it into the end zone. And Colgate defensively, two touchdowns on the day. And when, you're only, when you only put up three points offensively, that's just what the doctor ordered, and they'll take it. It's been a big day for Andrew Moore. A couple of tackles, interception. And now he recovers the fumble, and here's the extra point. That is up and good. And Colgate able to add to their lead. Again, the defense gets the job done. It is now a 17 to nothing game. And who was right in the middle of that play again defensively? Chris Williams, the cornerback. He has been around the football all afternoon. He has one interception himself and has been part of three other turnovers here today. Colgate enjoying the afternoon so far with a 17 to nothing lead. 
If you're significantly overweight, you've probably seen this commercial. When is a diet pill worth $153 a bottle? When you're more than 20 pounds overweight and every diet plan has failed. Now there's Leptoprin. She's right, but you don't have to pay $153 a bottle to experience significant weight loss. Generics Labs has obtained the exclusive rights to manufacture Leptopril. The same powerful Leptoprin SD formula, the same strength, the same amazing weight loss, but for less than half the price. So if you're significantly overweight, you can get the weight loss you want at a price you can finally afford. Leptopril from Generics Labs. Finally, significant weight loss at an affordable price. Order Leptopril risk-free. Call 1-800-688-5514. That's 1-800-688-5514. Order Leptopril now. Call 1-800-688-5514. That's 1-800-688-5514. Well, there's a good look, Number and three, Andrew three, Moore, three, as he took that ball three, back Sean for a defensive Paul. touchdown for Colgate. Fumble recovery and an interception. Big day for Andrew Moore and the Colgate defense. Nice day at the office, and look at the pressure. Here comes Nepa, a huge hit on the quarterback, up high, a dangerous hit, and then a good reception, but the strip there, credit number 14, Williams with the strip, and Andrew Moore able to take it to the house with the wheels there. Good pass out in the flat. Nice job stripping that football. And a good scoop there. Friendly home field bounce. The speed of Andrew Moore. Nobody's catching him. Gives Colgate a huge lead here. Well, that defense has really carried them today. And You know, when you're starting a young quarterback, as Colgate has done with Lee Sloan today, when you can get this kind of a pickup from your defense, boy, what a lift that is. A booming kick by Stein. Cobbs in the end zone one yard comes out up over the 15 to 20 breaks a tackle pretty good run here as he gets over the 25 and out to about the 27 yard line got to give rj cobbs a lot of credit right there for taking uh, that kick and turning it into a pretty positive return very good return they need to start taking advantage of field position out near the 30 yard line so a pretty good return on that kickoff We'll see who, who comes in at quarterback here if Day is coming back into the game or if they're going to go to the back up here. I don't see him on the sideline. Well, he doesn't look as though he's ready to come back into this game based on that picture. So Liam Cohen, a freshman quarterback out of Wakefield, Rhode Island, takes over. 6'2", 185 pounds. Cohen hands it off to Baylark. And as has been the case all afternoon, he has absolutely nowhere to go. There's Chris Williams again up on the play, just stepped up from that cornerback spot and was able to get in there on the tackle, helping out Pat Nolan. Number 55, Pat Nolan. The defense has really come in here on a mission to shut down Baylark, and they're really achieving that nicely, and it's a group effort. Nepa's done most of the damage, but a lot of help from that defensive line. And some of the corners and safeties coming up making some big hits as well. Yeah, it's been a big day for the defensive backfield, obviously. There you look at Tim Day, the starting quarterback for UMass, being attended to. And now UMass is charged with a timeout. Going, going over the plays, and boy, you're going to have this now. You're going to have some confusion from time to time, no doubt about it. This is uh, quickly turning into a long afternoon for Don Brown, the head coach of UMass. Today, ranked 15th in the Division I AA poll. James Madison at the top there. Foreman, Montana, Southern Illinois, Georgia Southern in the top five. Eastern Washington, New Hampshire, Western Kentucky, Northwestern State, and Delaware rounding out the top ten. UMass, after their win against Richmond last week, has Albany on the schedule next. They'll play their first home game of the season next week. And there you can see they'll play four straight at home. Albany, Rhode Island, Northeastern, and James Madison before they hit the road again. Actually, this is the first time since their national championship season in 1998 that UMass has started with their first two games on the road. They got it started off nicely. One win and no losses last week, but now are trailing by 17 points. Cohen with a pass and out of the backfield. 
or rather to making that reception is Dominique Stewart, wide receiver. Makes that catch along the near sideline. Pretty good pickup. Very nice pickup. And the, they get the defense going one way. The fake, good job selling the fake there of the run. And then a pretty pass right on the money. And Stewart, nice reception, the senior. And a good pickup on second down. So that'll leave third and short. Cone with an eye formation set up behind him. London back in the game at uh, the wide receiver spot. They take a handoff and they throw to London over on the far side. He leans forward, has enough for the first down, just stretching out over the 40-yard line out to about the 41. But he is still favoring his left leg. There you see him limping once again toward the sideline. That injury occurred in the second quarter. He wasn't on for that final series of the first half. And it doesn't look like he's going anywhere fast after making that catch. And that's too bad. He's a, a very talented kid. And you see a good catch there. And yeah, maybe the tackle at the end there around the ankle may have aggravated things. He's hobbled off to the sideline. They really need him in the game. He's obviously one of their best targets. Liam Cohen, the new quarterback for UMass. We've seen him use the play fake a couple of times. And that's one of the things that uh, they're excited about with him. He's a very good play action quarterback. Delay of game on Cohen and UMass right now, though. Well, and that's just a look of frustration right there. And now it's little mistakes that are starting to plague the minimum. First down and 15. Cohen going to throw, rolling toward the near sideline, trying to direct traffic, but he throws it out of bounds. Had nowhere to go there because J.J. Moore was well covered by the Raiders. And a wise move doesn't try and force anything in there. And as he runs away from the defense, buys himself a little extra time and wisely tosses that one to the sideline. And number 12, Andrew Moore. Liam Cohen, Cohen uh, his grandfather, Philip. Played football at Boston College and was the captain. Way back in the late 40s, early 50s. So he comes from a football pedigree. <laughs> Second down, 15. Pass is batted in the air and almost picked off again. Boy, missing out on a golden opportunity that time was Tom Cassano. Liam Cohen's pass. Well, linemen aren't supposed to have great hands, right? No, I think the eyes were bigger than the ball there. Though. It was uh, headed right, right for his snatches there. You see a good tip at the line, gets the hands up. And this one, I, yeah, the eyes certainly get very big there, and he's not supposed to catch those. That's why he's on the line, right? But a good chance there. You said it. He would have loved, loved to have another shot at that one. You don't get many of those that fall right in your arms like that. It was Josh Worst that got the penetration and actually batted that ball up in the air. Third down and 15. Cohen takes a snap, looks downfield. His pass picked off. And there is Nepa. All day long, he's been making tackles. This time, he makes the interception, and he has the ball back inside the 40-yard line, down to about the 38. Nepa, four tackles today, and now he can hang that interception on his hat as well. Well, you said it, Bobby. He's been solid, put some pressures on the quarterback. Those don't show up in the stats. Solid job tackling Baylark, and this time he finally gets... An interception for his troubles. Well, linemen may not be supposed to have good hands, but linebackers do. Look at this. Leaping catch. And credit those guys on the defensive line for Colgate. Getting their hands up. That ball tipped and redirected. And Nepa, nice job reeling it in. And gives Colgate another chance to put some points on the board. There's a good look at Jared Nepa, senior from Carbondale, Pennsylvania. Well, now Colgate can certainly run the ball. That's what they will do right up the middle and actually getting some pretty good yardage up to the 35-yard line. J.J. Bennett, the freshman running back, has had a good day here today, and he gets almost five there. And he's done a great job off the bench. Let's keep in mind, coming into this football game, LaMonica a little bit banged up. Hanson got the start, but now they've... They've went to the bench with Bennett, and he's given them a big lift offensively running the football. Nine rushes today for Bennett for 33 yards, some 
Very hard-earned yardage for J.J. Bennett. Two receivers to the right side. Bennett the lone setback. He takes the ball, and he is met immediately. For that time, Ahedebo read that play. James fired right up the middle and makes the tackle very quickly. Great job of penetration, breaking through there and making a good tackle and a good, see how he sticks his shoulders right there and buries the, the back. Bennett, and that's the first time that Bennett really has taken a clean shot in the backfield. He's been able to find the holes and get upfield. It's going to be third down and about seven. Two receivers to the right. Here comes UMass once again, the pocket collapsing. Sloan rolling out, puts the ball in the air, and that's going to be out of bounds. He was looking for Long down inside the 15-yard line. But when you're up 17 to nothing, that's a pass that you can make. If it goes out of bounds, it goes out of bounds. You pump the ball away because you're in control. The defense is certainly in control of this football game for Colgate. So don't try and force the issue. Defense will come back on the field, and they've been making play after play. And Obviously accounted for quite a few points here. Jason Sutton, four punts on the afternoon, averaging just under 36 yards. Steve Costello is standing at his own 10-yard line. And this ball will be caught and downed at the 15. Getting underneath that to pull it in, Jeff Bean. So once again, UMass going to be backed up after that 21-yard punt. And UMass still looking for something positive today. They want to get that offense cranked up, and they need to. It's the third quarter, and they trail by 17. If you're significantly overweight, you've probably seen this commercial. When is a diet pill worth $153 a bottle? When you're more than 20 pounds overweight, and every diet plan has failed. Now there's Leptoprin. She's right. But you don't have to pay $153 a bottle to experience significant weight loss. Generics Labs has obtained the exclusive rights to manufacture Leptopril. The same powerful Leptoprin SD formula, the same strength, the same amazing weight loss, but for less than half the price. So if you're significantly overweight, you can get the weight loss you want at a price you can finally afford. Leptopril from Generics Labs. Finally, significant weight loss at an affordable price. Order Leptopril risk-free. Call 1-800-688-5514. That's 1-800-688-5514. Order Leptopril now. Call 1-800-688-5514. That's 1-800-688-5514. Well, if you just look at that picture, you would think that things... Might not be going well for Colgate. Their head coach, Dick Biddle, in his 10th season here, well, they're going very well. And you would think that things are going very well for those young ladies. They have not gone well. UMass has not been able to get on the board today, trailing 17 to nothing. Liam Cohen beginning his second series after replacing Tim Day, who was injured earlier in the half. And still looking for running room today is Steve Baylark. He's been looking all afternoon and has yet to find it. That time it's Wesley Nepa has been doing a good job keen on Baylark. That time, Wesley, good tackle. Low tackle, doesn't try and take on Baylark upstairs, goes down around the waist and brings him down nicely. Well, if you're Baylark, you've got to be somewhat frustrated here today. So used to having good rushing games. Had 124 yards on the ground last week. Here he finally gets a good run, even though he had a kind of run his way right through traffic there but he gets over the 25 out to the 26 that's good for a first down and not a good sight there you see him limping off the field a lot of their star players getting dinged up in this game and you see there this time he's able to get them shoulders square up field and keeps the legs moving big powerful legs and a nice pick up there but he's headed to the sideline hobbles off hopefully he can shake it off well you can see why because there was a Raider on each ankle as he went down. Everybody just kind of hit him in the legs at the same time. That means Cobbs is now the tailback, and he'll take the pitch, looking to go to the far sideline, and he'll pick up a couple before being forced out of bounds. And credit that Colgate defense. They don't allow any lanes on the offensive line there. They push them wide, and their best friend that time was the sidelines. They string them out and force them over to the Colgate bench. There's a look at Baylark on the sidelines. Trying to shake off 
a little bit of injury and it looks like he has he goes back to the front of the sidelines and he'll be ready to report back in second down and nine a little over nine minutes to go here in the third quarter high formation behind Cohen the quarterback takes the handoff looks downfield passes incomplete Dominique Stewart the intended receiver on that play it'll be third down and nine this throw, this throw clearly behind the intended receiver Stewart there not a good throw but Stewart had a seam over the middle there had a lot of real estate we'll take a look here's a good look at it see the pass over the middle look at the room he has to operate if he can reel this one in but the pass just behind him and an incomplete pass unfortunately for UMass Nick Sabo is a defensive tackle that got his hand up there that may have just kind of thrown things off for Stewart Cohen taking the snap from the shotgun formation and wants to run and that ball is going to be incomplete Cobbs the intended receiver once again, things broke down very quickly for UMass. Pressure on Liam Cohen by number 31, Jared and since Cohen's coming into the game, Colgate, it looks Christian like they're sending a few extra guys in there in the passing situations and putting a lot of pressure on him. You see here a big hit. And they're fortunate that one's not an interception, but an incomplete pass. But Colgate, good pressure on the young quarterback there. Christian Kogel, one punt today for 44 yards. This is his second. Not a bad one either, and stepping up and taking that ball at the 36 is Jeff Bean. He gets up to the 45-yard line before he is brought down. It's a bit of a dangerous catch right there, of course, when you're up by 17 points. You're a little bit more comfortable in doing that. 37-yard kick. But uh, Bean, even though he had a man bearing down on him, he makes that catch and gets back to the 45. Andy Kerr Stadium here in Hamilton, New York at Colgate University today. Bob McElligot along with Dan Litka and the Raiders looking for their first home win of the year. They had a 17 game home winning streak snapped last week and today they have a 17 point lead. Sloan rolling right throws behind the intended receiver. That's incomplete. They were looking to get the ball to the fullback out of the backfield Ben Evans. And there's somebody whose name we haven't called much ever since the first quarter when he was pounding away at the middle of that defensive line of UMass. He was very effective on first down in the first quarter and also in a couple of short yardage situations. But you're right, we haven't seen much of him since that point. You wonder if there maybe is an injury, but he was very successful running the football early. Well, they've just been going with some uh, single setback looks, and they're doing that again here, but Evans is a lone man in the backfield. Here comes UMass on the blitz. They hand it off to Evans. There is nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere to go, and the first man in there was Charles Walker. He made the initial contact, and then he had plenty of help immediately. He's been one of their best defenders today. He's been in the backfield, spent a lot of time back there. You see here, good penetration. He's able to take down Evans, goes up high, and hangs on for a little bit of help here, but bang, bang, play. You see the linebacker able to break through there quickly. Third down at about 14. Well, this is a statement being made by UMass right now. Their defense needs to come out and get that football back. They're trying to force a three and out here. Sloan with a deep drop. Looks downfield, nowhere to go. Now feeling the pressure. Just tucks that ball away and just gets beyond the initial line of scrimmage. And they make their statement. I think we've lost sight of how well their defense has played. They've only given up three points. The scoreboard says 17. But the defense has really held their ground nicely. There was a guy that made the uh, initial pressure. Karan Williams, the defensive lineman, senior from Lake Park, Florida. And as you look at Steve Costello, who is back to receive the punt. But you're right. Defense, when you hold the opposing offense to three points, it normally is a good day. Yeah, it should give your, your, your team a chance to, to be successful. Punt is away. Costello. At the 22, dropped the ball, picks it back up, breaks one tackle, gets around another would-be tackler, a third tackle. There's a flag on the play now. Costello still looking for running room. Finally, is brought down at about the 25, and another flag comes in at the end of the play. The last one was obvious. I think the first one's going to be a block in the back, but that one, the late hit, well after the whistle on Colgate. Well, these two teams do have a history. We've mentioned they've 
gotten together four times. Colgate has won all three here at home and lost last year at UMass. I think the hatred started two years ago in the playoff, in a playoff game when UMass felt they were, they should have had the home field. Colgate ended up with the home field advantage. UMass comes to town. They end up staying in Syracuse about 45 miles away. We had that freak snowstorm. They made their way to Colgate. They got some bad directions. They went down 81 and then through 20. And if anyone knows from people from Massachusetts that maybe don't know what Route 20 is, Route 20 is the type of road you take your Corvette out on a summer day for a nice little ride and push it a little bit. They ran into a snowstorm and had a rough time getting here. And when they got here... An illegal block in the back. Massachusetts number 15. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, we got a personal foul, late hit, Colgate, number 62. That's a 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. He's one of the few guys I'm going to allow to interrupt me as I'm speaking, but I'll finish <laughs> the story. So by the time they get here, take a look at that replay on the punt, a little bit of a botched punt, and you see the late hit coming here after he surges forward. He covers a lot of ground but doesn't really gain much at this point. Still running. He's down there, and here comes the late hit after the whistle, well after the whistle. And there was a block in the back there. And the late hit. First down and 10. Cone. Play action. Man is open, but bobbling the football as he goes out of bounds. They're going to roll that a catch. No. Official comes in from downfield and says, nope, he was bobbling the ball, and indeed he was. Dominique Stewart. Couldn't pull it in before going out of bounds. And that's a good job of the officials getting together and making the right call. If you look at this from, from this angle, it might look like a catch because he screens the official. But the official right there at the top of your screen had a better angle, and he clearly was bobbling that football as he went out of bounds. All of a sudden, Dominique Stewart has been thrust into the spotlight of the passing game right now. Number 68. That penalty is accepted. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Still first down. Now UMass continues to make mistakes when it comes to penalties. And now they've got to back up 10 more yards. But with uh, Brandon London being injured, he injured his uh, left ankle late in the first half. Well, receiving has uh, become a problem. And Nepa, one of the few mistakes that he has made today, he will get flagged for here. Rancher, the intended receiver, and Nepa obviously interfered with him. No question. Grabbed a hold of him as he went by. You see, here's the throw. You'll see Nepa down low, makes contact with the receiver, grabs him around the ankles, and a few officials threw the flag there, and they're going to catch Nepa on that play. Now penalty by Colgate. Colgate, number 31. By rule, that ball is placed at the spot of the foul, and it's an automatic first down. So that is going to be at the 29-yard line. And that will have UMass back to about the original line of scrimmage, first down and 10. this time Baylark and Dollar says no to that run stepping up making the play Zach Dollar we haven't called his name a lot but when we have it's typically been a tackle for a loss here and you see a good open field tackle on Baylark doesn't allow him to square up to the line of scrimmage and a great defensive play for about a three yard loss there by Dollar Dollar at the end of the first half sack the quarterback the first time that UMass has given up a sack in their last four games and here he drags down the running back in the backfield and we've got whistles and flags and this will be another penalty against UMass a little bit of movement there dead ball foul 17 to nothing Colgate has the lead here and uh, this is now becoming the sloppy Friday football snap. game false start University of Massachusetts, number nine, five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, still second down. That's Dominique Stewart, a wide receiver. Don Brown, the head coach looking on. 
There's a look at Zach Dollar. Three sacks today. Becoming a specialist at tackles for losses on the afternoon. Cohen, play fake, man open, Nat Stewart, and he stumbles and falls out of bounds just across the 35 out to about the 36-yard line. And he is down and hurt, and the last thing that UMass wants to see is another injured wide receiver. He's been one of their better receivers today. He made a nice adjustment on the football there, able to reel it in, and he goes down pretty hard right in front of his own bench. Hopefully he can shake that off. We'll see a good throw by Cohen, a little bit high, but... Good athletic ability, good adjustment on the football, and he goes down a little bit awkwardly there. That's not going to count anyway. Ten-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Down remains the same. I'll tell you one thing. UMass is going the wrong direction. They keep on backing up. That ball is going to be back to about the 12-yard line now. they got to go to the 39 for a first down. Well, to put the tone of the game, their penalty yardage just about exceeds their rushing yardage. So that, that sums it up, what's going on here for UMass offensively. It's about a one-yard difference. I believe they have 40 yards in penalties and 41 yards rushing. Not the ratio you're looking for. Because there you see Stewart being helped off. Trainers will take a look at him and see if they can't get him back to a comfort zone anyway. You worry about that first. You worry about getting back into the ball game after that time. Cohen drops back, throws, pass complete. Cobbs makes the catch but can't find much running room afterwards. R.J. Cobbs, we told you he is a wide receiver. He's kind of bounced around. He's done everything. He started as a tailback. He went to play on the defensive side of the football in the backfield. Wide receiver is what he is listed at now, but today he went back into the backfield to help out there. But now, as you have a couple of receivers that have gone down with injuries, he is put back to the outside. He has great speed, but Colgate did a nice job containing him, not allowing him to break out and pick up any substantial yardage. Third down and about 27 to go. Cohen in the shotgun. Fires out to the far side. That catch is made. And down to about the 24-yard line is J.J. Moore. And UMass will have to punt this one away. And Colgate that time rushes four and keeps seven back in coverage, and they give plenty of room underneath those seven. Allow UMass to catch the football in front of the defense, come up, make a good open field tackle, and brings up a fourth down situation. Christian Kogel out to the punt again for the third time this afternoon. Puts this one up. Angled toward the near sideline. Jeff Bean will let it bounce. And the ball will be downed at the 36. And that's where Colgate will start once again. With 4.15 to go in the third quarter after a 40-yard punt. Well, we've got more college football coming your way this afternoon on Time Warner Sports 26. The Syracuse Orange going to be hosting the Bulls of Buffalo at the Carrier Dome today. Second game of the year for the Orange, and that kicks off at 3.30 this afternoon. Mark Larson and Dale Drypolcher will be at the Carrier Dome to bring you that one. And we've got Cincinnati at Penn State. That's coming up at 10 o'clock this evening here on Time Warner Sports. Big day of college football. Big day for the Raiders here at home. As Evans takes the handoff, can't find anywhere to go. He immediately is brought down right along the line of scrimmage. Jason Hatchell, sophomore linebacker, making the tackle, and we have a late flag. On the tackle, and there is a flag on the play. And this will go against UMass, based on the reaction of the Colgate players. And it came in well after the whistle, so I'll be curious to see what they call here. Personal foul against the Minutemen. And the Colgate, they've done a nice job shutting down the Colgate offense. They don't need to spot them 15 yards, which they do here. After the play was over, personal foul, 92, University of Massachusetts, a blow to the head, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So 
So late hit. And that is a first down for Colgate right at midfield. Fake of a handoff. And there's a throw out to the right side, a little bit high, but plenty of time to bring it in for Kenny Parker. The former running back that has been moved out to the wide receiver's position. Makes the catch there. It's all right if that pass is a little bit off when you have this much time and this much separation between yourself and the defender. Yeah, well, actually dropped that ball at the end. Tough throw on the run there, rolls it out, throws it a little high, and Parker unable to trail that throw, so second down. The Colgate inside of UMass territory with that 15-yard penalty. Single set back again, two men out to the right. UMass bringing it off the corner, but right up the middle for a couple of yards goes J.J. Bennett. The the UMass defense has been on the field a long time, and they're really holding their ground. Still, Colgate only three points offensively. Have to give that defense for UMass a lot of credit. They have not allowed the quarterback to get on track. And other than Parker, they've really shut down Colgate's run as well. Third down play. Third down and a long seven for Lee Sloan. Out of the shotgun. Here comes UMass once again. They bring the blitz. Sloan steps up, takes one hit, and finally is brought down. One man got him high, one man got him low. In on that tackle for UMass, Jason Hatchell, joined by Charles Walker. Defense has been outstanding. They've held Colgate to just 150 yards total offense. UMass has 223, and you see here, pressure again. Pa obvious passing situation, dangerous play there. You see the arm up high on the quarterback there. Number 11 for UMass comes in with that tackle. That was Walker, got the arm up a little bit high on Lee Sloan, and fortunately just jogs off the field. He's okay. James Ahedabo actually was the other man in on that tackle for UMass, who will get the ball back once again. Standing at his 15-yard line is Steve Costello. End over end kick this time. Costello steps up and takes it at the 24 and is brought down at the 25. He was looking for running room, and Jared Neffa on special teams this time makes the play. So there is a one-yard return on that punt, and it'll be first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Actually, they'll move it out to the 26 for UMass, 29-yard punt, two-yard return. The Napa, one of the best tacklers on the team here, you see on special teams, great open field tackle. Napa and Dollar both have had great games for Colgate, defensively and on special teams. First down and 10. 220 remaining here in the third quarter. 17 to nothing lead for Colgate over UMass. Cohen going to hand the ball off to Baylor, and he tries the left side this time. Not finding much there. Injury report on Dominique Stewart. Stewart has a right hamstring injury. His return to this game is questionable. Colgate defense has been great all afternoon. They've generated 14 points. And no matter whether it's stopping the run or intercepting passes, they've been there. Yeah, good there that time. Good pressure on the quarterback here. Good open field tackle. That was on a third and long situation. And then the big story of the day is how they've shut down Baylor. Baylor got almost a guaranteed 100 yards per game. They shut him down today in a big way. Cone rolling toward the near sideline. Pass is going to be caught. Nice job leaning out of bounds. Raheed Rancher kept his feet in. That catch was all hands. Rancher, big guy, six foot five, only a sophomore receiver. But this is a veteran type catch right here. Oh, he's been impressive all day. Great size, but the soft hands and the presence of mind to drop those feet down and keep it in bounds. He's been impressive. Five interceptions thrown on the day by UMass. The most since they played Hofstra in 1997. So it's been a long time since this offense has had a bad day like that when it's come to throwing the interception. Here's a play fake and the throw right over the middle. That ball caught. And the ball carrier going to be brought down at about the 42-yard line there. They find another target, Mike Douglas, the tight end, right over the middle. And Cohen gets the ball into his hands for a first down. I tell you what, Cohen's come into this game and, and really taken over. 
completing about 50% of his passes, but they're good throws. You see this one over the middle, right on target, right on stride. He's been solid. And a good reception, a nice gain there for UMass, able to move the chains. Jeff Bean in on that tackle for Colgate, was the first man to meet him. Down to a minute, eight seconds remaining in the third quarter. Cohen, quick out on the left side. Rancher going to step up over the 35-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down right there. For that time, not trying to hide anything, just quick two, three-step drop, fire it out there and let Rancher do the rest. Well, they really backed off Rancher and gave him about a 10-yard cushion, so they made a quick toss out there. He uses his speed and he picks up nine yards. And I'll tell you what, if UMass gets into the end zone, the way their defense has been playing, there's no reason they can't get the ball back again. If they get any kind of offensive flow going here, well, then they still could be dangerous before this one's over. But not running the football again. Baylard finding absolutely no room, and now some pushing and shoving at the end of the play. Number five. And this all depends Baylor on the spot. He was able to search forward, and he does pick up the first down by about a half a yard, so you, you said it, 17-0, headed into the fourth quarter. The way the defense is playing, if they can get seven here, we've got ourselves a pretty good football game. And as you said, Liam Cohen, ever since he has come into the game, he has started to take over. There were some initial mistakes in talking about time management, the clock, a couple of delay of game penalties, but he's been smart with the football so far. Let's take a look at the uh, total yards for these two teams. Douglas comes in motion to the near side. Pitch to the tailback. Baylock, he's going to throw, and he's looking for the quarterback, and Cohen makes a reception at the 20, the 15, and down to about the 13-yard line. The ball pops out, but it's ruled that he was already down. So Baylark not finding any running room. Well, they decide to let him showcase his arm instead. I love the call. You don't see this play very often. Baylark, pretty decent throw across the field. That's not easy with someone bearing down on him. And how about the QB after the catch? Able to pick up about an extra seven, eight yards and goes down. And that is the final play of the third quarter. So Liam Cohen has come into quarterback, turns himself into re receiver on that play, and he has UMass inside the 15-yard line. They've got 15 minutes left here today to try to make up a 17-point deficit. We'll go to the fourth quarter next. Timeshare or campground membership? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one, most successful timeshare agency, representing properties from the biggest names in the industry. No one sells more timeshares. Call now and receive a free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Call 800-310-0985 to get your free information kit. have a 17-point lead as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. But UMass has been driving here, and there have been a couple of key plays so far throughout this drive. Cohen's really settled in nicely at quarterback. First to throw over the middle there to the tight end, a good reception, and a nice pickup. Then a little quick pass out in the flat. That time it's Rancher. He's able to get ahead for nine, and then the halfback toss back to the quarterback. And a huge, huge gain there. Gets them down in this, into the scoring zone. And UMass Really would love to put some points on the board. The way their defense is playing, a score here means a heck of a game. They do have some momentum right now. J.J. Moore comes to the near side of the field. Douglas back in motion over to the far side. Take the handoff. Cohen back to Moore, looking to break a tackle. Spins inside the five-yard line. He's down to about the four. Boy, a lot of movement there, a lot of misdirection. And here are your stats through the third quarter. Neither team had 100 yards rushing in the passing yardage. Look at that starting to really build up for UMass. Turnover is still the story right now. 8-1. to one. UMass giving the ball away way too much today. Cole and the freshman is coming in 8 out of 13. 
He's really settled down since that pick, and he's moving his team mechanically. He looks very solid, sells the face well, throws the ball nicely. And here he's just going to run it out to the right. He's got a man to throw that may have skipped to the intended receiver, Bay Larkin. Indeed, it did. Incomplete pass. But you also have to credit the UMass Colgate staff. I think they realized that Colgate's keyed up against Baylor. Now they've really went to more of a passing oriented offense. You see there the throw, just a little under throw. But since Cohen's come in, they've really been crisp. The passes have been on the money, and they're really moving the ball effectively. That's an underthrown ball, but that's a good throw because, first of all, he's rolling that way. It makes it a tough play. And he threw that ball where only Baylor could catch it. There was no way that ball would be picked off. So it is an incomplete pass. Okay. And it is third down and one. You've got a ton of analysts in you, don't you? <laughs> third down and one. Baylark up the middle. And he is stopped. And we'll have to see where they spot the football here. Oh, I don't think so. He barely got across the five-yard line. Needed to get to the about the three. Number 67, Jeff Gillespie, and 31, Jared Temple. And indeed, he did not get there. Play the coach here, Bob. Fourth down, what do you do here? Well, they're going to kick. At least they're setting up to kick. Armando Cuco is on to kick. Tim Day is out to be the holder. Cuco puts it up, and he missed it. After all of that, Cuco misses the field goal attempt and a relatively short field goal attempt at that, and UMass comes away with no points from that long drive. And that can be deflating. They really move the ball down there. Beautifully, it was a great drive, and they come away with no points. Very, very unfortunate. Well, I guess you look at it as though at some point you're going to need the field goal, so go ahead and take the field goal. But on the uh, same token, yeah, you, assu you assume that's a, a gimme from right. that distance. It's very easy to look back in hindsight and say, well, why didn't you just try to do something for one yard? But having said that, they haven't been able to consistently run the ball today. You just saw on third down, they couldn't even get the one yard they needed. Yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. Kick the field, they'll come away with the three points. See what the defense can do here. Well, the defense has been good today. As Colgate, a short gainer here. J.J. Bennett carrying the football once again. And this UMass defense, again, they are not getting the credit that they deserve. If you just look at the score of this game, you, you would think... Uh, well, they haven't done a good job defensively well, today. Well, yes, they have. What, what impresses me is they've been on the field the time of possession, 40 minutes in favor of Colgate to 20 for UMass. They've been on the field that long, and they're still this effective. It's amazing. The conditioning is outstanding. Second down and nine. Sloan. He's going to throw. Rolls toward the near side, puts that ball in the air, and he's got his man, Dwayne Long, over the 40 and out to the 41-yard line. It's the first time that Long has been a real factor today. Hasn't caught a ball since early on in this game. But that's a big catch there to give Lee Sloan some confidence. Without question, they roll him out of the pocket, and they need the seniors to step up here in Long. A nice pattern in between the defense. He makes a good catch there. First down and 10. Now there's some confusion there along the line as Long and Parker set up to the left side. Raiders hand the ball off. Biddle looking for room up the middle. Again, another short gain. It'll get out to about the 44-yard line where it'll be second down. Picks up about three. Number 11, Charles Walker. Charles Walker in on the tackle. And number 17, the ball. For UMass. Well, this offense, the last couple of times out, UMass's defense has played very well, Dan, but also there's been no real pressure. 17-point lead, you don't really need to get anything going, but on this drive, it's very important because UMass wants that ball back. They finally got something going on offense for themselves as we get a whistle and a delay of game penalty. I, I agree with your point. I, I look at it another way, in addition to how you look at it. 17-point lead. Game. Colgate, five-yard penalty, still second down. You'd like to run the football and, and, and dominate that clock with that 17-point lead, and they haven't been able to do that. They haven't been able to consistently move the chains. UMass has done a great job stopping the run, and when it's been a passing situation, putting pressure on the quarterback. Second down play. And this handoff, Biddle. 
little bit of room, stays on his feet. The man that came up there and made the hit was Brandon Smith. Number 21, J.J. Defensive Bennett, back. by Brandon Smith. Number 23. Hey, what though, J.J. Bennett has been a pretty big part of this game today. He'll go off to the sideline right now, but he hasn't had a lot of long runs. He has amassed his yardage today just a couple of yards at a time. But he has certainly been a workhorse this afternoon. Three receivers for Colgate showing blitz as UMass, and here they come. Sloan gets hit, that ball in the air, and falls incomplete. Looked like he had a chance to step away from that pressure and right at the last second. UMass got in there and broke up the entire play. The defense holds their ground and UMass will get the ball back here, but they're able to get their hands up around the line of scrimmage and get some good pressure on that quarterback. Ball will be set at the 40-yard line. at the 40. Now they've moved it up to the 44-yard line. Still going to be a fourth down Number play. Okay, going to punt again. They've actually done a lot of punting this afternoon. This is the eighth punt of the day for the Raiders. Costello again back to receive that uh, punter going to keep the ball here as the snap was a little bit off and here he comes setting up the near side over the 40, the 35, inside the 30-yard line and down to about the 26. What a play there. And boy, does that turn things around for the Raiders. Jason Sutton taking that ball, hanging on to it, and that's a big run for a first down. Well, good speed, and it's a gutsy move because he had an opportunity to kick that ball there, but he just tucks it here, and he shows good speed in the open field. Gets upfield here, and watch how he protects the football as he's going down. Right here, two hands on the football, protects it, no fumble, picks up a huge first down, but I'm impressed with the foot speed, and he made up his mind, and he went with it. But Ron Williams gets back to tackle him. It was, uh, ironically, Williams who he froze with a little stutter step to make sure that he got into the open field. Not a lot of juke in punters, but <laughs> Mr. Sutton certainly has it. Yeah, 29-yard run. So, once again, Colgate on the offense. Pass over the middle. Picked off at the five-yard line. Well, Steve Costello was back there to receive the punt. He never got the punt. So he goes and gets the ball himself as he picks it off at the five. And that interception will put UMass back on the offense with 10.33 to go here in the fourth quarter. Colgate leads this game 17 to nothing. The Ultimate Sports Entertainment Experience is back. Be a part of the fun and excitement of football Saturdays in Philly with the Temple Owls at beautiful Lincoln Financial Field. Don't miss big-time college football this season right in your own backyard as Temple takes on the nation's best, including Maryland and Miami. That's right. The Terps and Hurricanes are coming to Philly. Bring the whole family. Tickets start as low as 10 bucks for kids. Temple football. New look. New league. New attitude. Call 215-336-2000 and reserve your seats today. Monday on CNA, meet top 10 recording artist Josh Kelly. Monday on Nightbeat with Barry Nolan, only on CNA, the Comcast Network. Is New Jersey with Steve Adubato. He's stories behind the headlines. How education, child care. Issues affecting you and your family. Medicine, your money. Newsmakers one-on-one. -on -one. Doctors, Doctors, politicians, professionals. Caucus, New Jersey, Sunday, 6.30 and 11.30 Eastern on CN8. Well, Dick Biddle, 2-9 lifetime against the Atlantic 10 coming into today, but his team has a 17-point lead here in the fourth quarter. As we look at this interception by Costello at the five-yard line. And he tries to hit Dwayne Long on a post there. Well, I can't say that it was poorly thrown. It was just a bad decision. I, I think they would have that ball there and not try to force it into the middle of the football field. And Costello, the recipient of the interception, and UMass a long field to conquer here. Liam Cohen, quarterback. In his own end zone, long pass down the far sideline. That ball bounced before... Got to Raheed Rancher. UMass is now 
recorded 22 interceptions in their last 13 games. Of course, last week they had four picks against Richmond. Defended by Cody Williams and Chris Williams. It's second down. Second down play, second down and 10 from the five. And they have let Cohen show off his arm here this afternoon. Again, the report on him was he was a good play-action quarterback. He's shown that as well today. Perry's going to hand the ball off to Baylor. Can finally find some room up the middle. He makes a cut at the 15, the 20-yard line, and is over the 25, brought down at about the 27. And he is brought down by two Raiders, Cody Williams, along with Andrew Moore. And number 12, Andrew Moore on the stop. Boy, the first time today that he has found any running room. And that time he came up the middle untouched. There just have not been holes up the middle like this today. Not at all. And I think Holgate's sitting back expecting fast since UMass has changed the game plan strategy a little bit. And that frees up a big hole on the offensive line, and he takes advantage of it. Another nice catch this time along the near sideline. It's J.J. Moore who pulls that one in. That's at the 35-yard line. There's Moore who makes sure that he keeps his feet in bounds here. Good look at it there on the sideline. Got some very skilled receivers and Moore is one of them. Ranchers one, is another one. London obviously on the bench with an injury. Three, four solid receivers, big, tall receivers, very athletic. There's your time of possession in this game. Here's another ball caught by Moore. This is out near the 40-yard line. And he will have enough for the first down. So they'll move the chains. Number 27, Cody Williams. Still over 10 minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Just over 10 minutes. Spot the ball at the 41-yard line. Will it be first down and 10? Bring up situation here for UMass. Cohen taking that snap. And he's looking to run. And he's got the room to run up to the 50-yard line and takes a lick, but he gets inside the 45 of Colgate. Finally finishing off that tackle was Jason Hill, the sophomore lineman out of Miami. What a great decision. He had a ton of space. Receivers all covered downfield. He checks off, and you see, I, don't, I think he was surprised how much space he had over to, the, to his left side, and he takes advantage of big gain there. I like the fact that he didn't just run out of bounds either. He takes the lick. Although maybe you can get that clock stopped by going out of bounds, but uh, he wanted to make sure that he got the extra yardage as we have flags here prior to the snap of the ball. Prior to the snap, ball start. Massachusetts number 44, five-yard penalty, line of scrimmage, still first down. That's the tight end, Mike Douglas. 9.32 remaining in the fourth quarter. Colgate leading 17 to nothing. Rancher goes out wide to the right side. Cobbs the slot man there. To the near side of the field is J.J. Moore. And they're going to throw it toward the right. Rancher got knocked down. He's looking for a flag. He does not find one, and there was a chance for Chris Williams. Already has one pickoff today. He's looking for another. And this looks like a little mix-up between the quarterback and the receivers. Here's a good look at it. From up top, you see the pass. It's like a mix-up on the roots there. That ball kind of thrown into no man's land, and they're fortunate to retain possession there. Second down, 15. Pass to the near sideline. Moore hit immediately, still fighting for more yardage, and gets to about the 41-yard line. First man to step up and hit him was Cody Williams. They've been very effective with those quick passes. Colgate giving the receivers some cushion. UMass taking advantage. You see here, it gets rid of it very quickly. Not a pretty throw, but effective. And how about the effort after the catch there by J.J. Moore, able to pick up three, four more yards. Third down and long. Cohen right over the middle. He's got the tight end, Douglas, inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. And that is good for a first down. Another big target for Cohen, 6'3", 246. The tight end there, senior from Florida. Runs a good pattern over the middle and a nice pickup. First down and 10. 
Cohen again to the near sideline. And the catch is made at about the 25-yard line. That'll get him close to five yards. And more again, another good catch right along the sideline, making sure that he stays in bounds. Nine catches on the day has been a big target for UMass. Again, he's only a sophomore out of St. Petersburg. But with a, an injury to their big man, Brandon London. A couple of injuries on the receiving core as Baylark gets very little running room. Not only London is out, but Dominic Stewart went out with an injury, so J.J. Moore stepped up and picked up the slack here. Actually, that was his 10th catch, so he's having a great afternoon. Doing a good job getting open, but Colgate giving them a little bit of a cushion, and he's taking advantage of it. Moore again takes that ball just inside the 20. A little bit of a dangerous play there. He knew it was close to the first down marker, so he tried to reach that ball out, but... He was still in play, and he was holding the ball out there with one hand. And after all of the turnovers today for UMass, the last thing they want to see here is another. Absolutely. Very, very risky. It is good for the first down, though. Liam Cohen looking left. Puts that ball in the air. It is caught, and into the end zone goes Moore for the touchdown. So UMass finally getting on the board. The last time they were shut out was September 30th of 1995. They have scored points in 117 straight games. That was in jeopardy today. Well, thanks to that touchdown, that will go to 118 games. Got to be impressed with more. 12 catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown. It's been very effective, and UMass has been moving the ball in the second half very effectively. They finally come away with some points to show for it. Kuko with the extra point, and that will make it a 10-point game. And that missed field goal looms large right now. 7.50 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And you can see the spirits on the bench. Heads were down previously. They're back up. Now they are up, and that offense finally able to push the ball across the goal line. Visit your Tri-State Quality Ford store today. They're true leaders, ready to play hard. Introducing the Yankee Edition Ford Explorer. Dressed with pinstripes, a champion's logo. More powerful, more fuel efficient, more interior quietness. This special 2006 Ford Explorer could be yours, and it won't cost you a thing. Register to win at your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer now, and drive home the best Explorer ever. Ford, built for the road ahead. Monday on CNA. I'm Connie Cola rescuing the pets left behind from Katrina. Plus, financial planning for children with special needs. Monday on Your Morning, only on CNA, the Comcast Network. J.J. Moore, who just cracked the end zone for the first time today for UMass. And he was the workhorse on that entire drive, catching a lot of balls. And there you see 12 receptions on the day, averaging almost 10 yards a catch. Big time numbers. Been a very solid receiver. Runs up nine, 10 yard patterns, gets open, sure hands. And here, down around the goal line, pretty route toward the goal post, reels it in, and gets into the end zone. Good for him. Having a fantastic game. And the quarterback, Collins, since he's come in, what a big spark. Put in the air and backing up. Jeff Bean takes that one inside the five yard line. Out over the 10, 15, and brought down. And UMass defense will go to work. We've talked about them today. They have given up three points. And the Colgate defense has scored the other 14 points in this game. So UMass defensively has done a good job this afternoon. They're going to be asked to try to get a three and out right now. Without question, and for Colgate offensively, it's all about owning the football here, owning that clock, and run some time off. Seven minutes to go, three and out. Could be disaster. UMass really moving the ball at will right now. First down and ten. And the handoff just across the 15-yard line is J.J. Bennett. 
This is the goal right now. Number Work on that Clark. Aaron Hatchell on the tackle. But, uh, Colgate will take their good old-fashioned time here in between plays. There is no hurry. Lee Sloan has had a good afternoon. Second down play. Sloan going to throw it. That ball batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Well, the man that got up and knocked it down, Justin Schweikart. Schweikart from Fort Lauderdale, senior defensive lineman. And you see three or four linemen in there really rushing the passer. Schweikart along with number 55, Hatchell. Good pressure on the quarterback. And whenever he's dropped back to pass, they've done a good job putting pressure on him. Well, that stops the clock. Seven oh six remaining. Sloan going to have to put the ball in the air again. Third down and long. And here they come. They're after him. They've got him. The ball is in the air. And that ball is going to be recovered by whom? It's going to be a Colgate football. I'll tell you what, the Raiders just dodged a bullet right there. And I'd, I'd be curious to see the replay. Not sure. Looked like his arm was moving forward. Not sure. If that, let's take a look. Here's a good look. These guys are right on the spot. Ooh, yeah, they, they, they definitely knocked it out before the floor of motion. Colgate dodged the bullet. You called it, Bob. But not, not much of a good deal here. They're punting out of their own end zone. Not a lot of space to operate. And the last two snaps back to the punter have been... A little off their mark. I'll tell you what, the Colin Stetzel makes a big play there to recover that fumble. And you can bet UMass will be coming after that punter. No doubt about it. Standing at the back of the end zone is Sutton. And he will kick away the eighth punt of the day for the Raiders. A short kick taken at about the 40. Actually, not so short, 40-yard punt. And here's Costello, and he sheds a couple of would-be tacklers over the 20, the 15, the 10, and Sutton brings him down at the five-yard line, but there's a flag all the way back at the 30-yard line. So this could be another break for the Raiders. And indeed, well, no, this is going to go against UMass. Yep, so it's, uh, it is a break for them. I and mean, when Costello fielded that punt, he went to his left, and he cut back to go to his right. During their return, illegal block in the back above the waist, Massachusetts, number 91, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. When he received the punt, he went to his left, cut back to his right, and when he did that, that created the scenario of that block in the back, and the officials threw the flag, and that's a shame. It was a beautiful return. But still... Good field position. You see here, he goes back to his right. And there's a couple of piles there, and there's the, the flag comes in later. But I believe when he cut back, that little pile at the bottom of the screen was where the block in the back occurred. But still, UMass in very good field position, a lot of time on the clock. Well, let's see if Cohn can engineer another scoring drive. Did well on the last one, and here he gives to Cox. Coming toward the near sideline, good stiff arm, and... He's drugged down before he gets out of bounds. Zach Dollar still down on the field for Colgate, slowly getting up, and now we'll get an official timeout. Dollar getting to his feet and trying to get back to the huddle, but looks like he may have had the wind knocked out of him right there. The Cobb's good effort in an attempt to get to the sideline. He went from the far hash mark all the way over here across the field and nearly got out of bounds. Picks up about six yards on first down. The dollar goes off to the sidelines. And that worked out for UMass because the clock stopped. They're able to reset. And now snap the football once again. Looking downfield, Cohen passes into traffic. That one knocked away. Dangerous pass that time. A lot of maroon jerseys around Mike Douglas, the tight end. Jeff Bean in there to knock it away. Here's a good look from behind. You see Cohen looking for the tight end the whole way. Pretty good throw, but a good play. Bean reaches around and able to deflect that pass around. But that was a, or that pass down to the ground. But that was a pretty well-thrown football there. Third down. Zach Dollar checks back in for Colgate. Cohen 
Got pressure. Dumps it off to Baylard. He's over the 30. And down to the 25-yard line before he is drugged down by Tom Cassano. That's going to be a first down. Well, Baylark has not had a great day running the football, averaging 3.3 yards per carry today. That's well below his average. But here he makes a nice play, taking this little dump-off pass. He's made some good plays on third down when they've needed to pick up a first down in big situations. You see here out of the backfield, a couple of moves, breaks a few tackles, and picks up a big first down for UMass. J.J. Moore has not caught a pass yet on this drive. Chance right here, and he couldn't bring it in one-handed. I'll tell you what, that would have been an acrobatic catch if he would have been able to bring that ball in. And he would have had UMass set up right on the doorstep. He has 12 receptions on the day. That's a new school record for UMass. And the previous record of 11 was held by Adrian Zulo and, and then a son of someone who knows how to catch the ball, Tim Barra, son of Yogi Barra. Yogi never had to run with it, though. <laughs> Good point. Down to 4.57 remaining in the fourth quarter. 17-7, Colgate leading UMass. The Minutemen on the march here. Cohen over the middle. Pass deflected and falls incomplete. Jared Neffa. All day he's been right in the middle of things. And here he knocks that pass down. In the middle of it again here. He has a ton of tackles, but this time in pass defense. Able to go in there and break up his first pass of the day, but he's been solid. Defensively, six tackles on the day. Oh, quite a few hurries. He's pressured the quarterback nicely. He's a solid all-around player. Third down and ten. Big play coming up here for UMass. Cohen with time. Over the middle. And Cobb catches that ball at the five-yard line. Boy, I'll tell you, you talk about zipping that pass in there. Liam Cohen with a nice throw and a very nice catch by R.J. Cobbs. Yeah, you have to credit A, the throw is perfect. But Cobbs really gets hit a little bit before this ball gets there and, and still stays with it right there. A lot of contact, and he's able to pull it in. That's a tough catch. He had number 28 being draped all over him. A ton of contact. Here's a quick fire to the right side and a touchdown. Rancher catching that ball and getting it into the end zone and with 437 remaining in the fourth quarter we've got a game you've got to be impressed with the receivers that they've marched out here today with Cobbs and Rancher and Moore and let's not forget about London who started in four or five good targets their tight end number 44 Douglas has made an impact so they've got a ton of weapons in uh, they're start, they obviously have found their groove here passing the football. Kuko with the extra point attempt, and that is good. And it is a three-point game. Colgate now clinging to a 17-14 lead with 4.37 to go in the fourth quarter. In a scary situation for Colgate. Haven't had to rely on their offense a whole lot today. Guess what? Now they need a big drive. They need to run this clock out because UMass is really picking apart that defense. If they get the football back, to put Colgate in a very difficult situation. So it's very important they run the clock out on this next drive. But look at this throw. A little behind the receiver. I'm more impressed with the catch than the throw there. And 17, Rancher has been good all day. Look at the size. 6'5", big kid. A good adjustment on the football there. That ball clearly behind him. Excellent adjustment on the football. You see the day he is having 39 yards. Again, averaging almost 10 yards per catch. And he gets the touchdown there. He's a sophomore, J.J. Moore, who has 12 receptions on the day. He's a sophomore. They've had to go to the underclassmen, and those players have delivered to this point. And how about J.J. Moore on the previous drive? Caught almost every pass of the entire drive. This time, he's out of the mix the entire way, and R.J. Cobbs and Raheed Rancher take over and still get the same result. One guy has 12 receptions. Eight different receivers have caught a pass. That's... That's incredible. A lot of weapons. And Cohen, what can you say about the job he's done in relief? It's been out of this world. I don't think they would ever would have expected a freshman to come off the bench and just pick apart a defense like he has since he settled in. This ball going to bounce, and it winds up staying in bounds. And Long picks it up, and he only gets across the five-yard line. 
Well, it's a gamble you take right there. If that ball goes out of bounds, it's a penalty. It's a legal procedure, but the ball stayed inbounds, and right now UMass has everything going their way. And if he had another split second and let that ball take one more turn, it probably would have went out of bounds, but let's keep in mind that's a loose football. He had to pick it up here. There's a great look at it there. We've got some great cameramen. You see, if he had another second, that eh, might have went out, but defense bearing down, he has to pick it up. Now that UMass defense is going to be asked for another stand here. 4.34 to go in the fourth quarter. Sloan going to hand this ball off and looking for running room and finding very little off the left side is J.J. Bennett. Now they will keep the clock turning by running the football, but just picking up two yards there. And we talked about it all afternoon. Bennett has uh, only picked up two, three, maybe four yards at a clip. So unless they can get a little better production than that, they are going to have to throw the football here. I formation once again. And there was movement, and I believe UMass may have just made a mistake right there. May have been offside. And that is indeed the case. Well, you get a little bit antsy. But those are critical mistakes at a critical time of the ball game. Offside, University of Massachusetts, number 91. It's a five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Still second down. Andy Resende Gomes. And unfortunately, that's the second big penalty for him in this quarter. So now it's a second down and much more manageable yardage. It's down to second down and a short four. Quick handoff. And not much there. They go back to the fullback Evans, who they used almost exclusively in the first quarter of this game. They've gone away from that after he was picking up some big chunks of yardage, but this time UMass shuts him down before he gets to the first down marker. It's third down and a long one yard to go. Quarterback Sloan under center. Going to hand that ball off to the first man through. Did he get far enough for the first down? I think he did. It'll be a huge spot here. First down really helps Colgate control the football and control that clock, more importantly. And we will have an official measurement here. Colgate players were signaling that they got far enough for the first down. You think about how many times they measure in a football game. Not many of them are very dramatic. This one, on the other hand, very important. No, he's got it. No drama there. <laughs> As it turns out, there was not. You know, but good for the officials because you don't assume anything in a ball game like this. Three-point game, 3.05 to go. UMass going to have to start using their timeouts on defense here. Now that penalty right now is very big. They gave the extra five yards to Colgate to work with. They converted that, turned it into a first down. And off to Evans, the fullback. Gets up to the 20-yard line. That penalty, very important. UMass forced to take a timeout here. Let's not forget that missed field goal, obviously. But there's going to is the difference in the game right now. But that, that five-yard penalty really gave Colgate the opportunity for two downs to make just about three yards. So that helped them big time at a bad point in the game for, Colgate, or for UMass. Well, more college football coming your way this afternoon, live from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse at 3.30. Buffalo visiting the Orange. Syracuse looking for the first win of the year, as are the Buffalo Bulls. They were shut out by UConn last week. So we've got that game for you live on Time Warner Sports 26 at 3.30 this afternoon. It's a shame to be inside because look how nice it is outside today. Here at Andy Kerr Stadium, on the campus of Colgate, the Raiders looking for their first win of the year, up by three on UMass. And the ball is going to be at the 20-yard line. Hey, later on tonight, we've got uh, some more college football coming your way. Cincinnati Bearcats going to be at State College to take on the Nittany Lions of Penn State. 
You'll be able to see that one tonight at 10 o'clock here on Time Warner Sports 26. Nice day to be on the couch, huh? Just what my wife wants to do. <laughs> What's that, your wife's on the couch all day today? <laughs> yeah, well, the Yankees are on too. I'm sure she's flipping back and forth. <laughs> 2.43 to go in the fourth quarter. And Sloan going to throw the ball. He never got it away, and he's dropped for a loss back at the 11-yard line. Huge sack there. Pushes Colgate back inside the 10 and brings up a huge third and long. Third down. A lot of time that they can force a punt out of the end zone. Charles Walker, you see, he wraps up Sloan and drags him down. He said a great day. I'm sorry to catch yeah. you off there, but Walker's been awesome. He spent a ton of time in that backfield. Clock turning down to 209 remaining. Third down, two minutes remaining. Here's the snap. Inside handoff to the fullback Evans. He will be wrestled to the ground after a very short gain. Brought down shy of the 15-yard line. And a timeout is called by UMass. And one thing we want to keep an eye on is the last three snaps to the punter for Colgate. Remember, one resulted in the punter taking off and running because the snap was poor. The one before that might have been even worse, but he had good blocking and was able to regroup. And the last one wasn't stellar by any means. So a lot of pressure on the long snapper here as Colgate is going to kick from near their end line. So UMass taking their final timeout. Talk about looking back at things that happened earlier in the game. Remember when Liam Cohen came in to take over as the quarterback, they had to take a timeout early on that first series that he ran. I think it was the second play that he ran. There was confusion. They had to burn a timeout. That's something that they obviously would love to have back at this point. At that time, it was 17 to nothing. But uh, right now, they've just burned their final timeout. And, and looking back at that point, you're saying... I was saying to myself, could it get any worse? Freshman quarterback, you're down 17, you've got six turnovers. Can it get any worse? Well, Mr. Cohen has answered the bell quite nicely and has an opportunity right now to move him down the field and either tie this game or take the lead. Steve Costello back to take the kick. Remember the last time he had a very nice return, got it down to the five-yard line, but the ball was brought back because of an illegal block on the return. Sutton puts the ball in the air. A nice high kick, and there's pressure on Costello, who makes the catch, and is brought down immediately. What a play turned in right there by Jeff Bean. The junior strong safety playing on special teams gets there and makes that catch. 40-yard punt, but Bean, if he doesn't make that tackle and he lets Costello get away, who knows what can happen. That's a huge play for Colgate. Great play and pushes UMass back inside their own 50. Great play on special teams. Neppa before him that time being great job. Great coverage on the kick and able to shut a tackle or shut a block to make that tackle. Well, UMass is down by a field goal. There's Jeff Bean. Four tackles today. UMass earlier in the game missed a field goal, which is haunting them right now. They only need to get into position for a field goal. Here's a pass in Moore along the near sideline, makes the catch. And he gets out of bounds. And they move the chains anyway here. What a big pass that is coming right out of the gate with a pass to J.J. Moore. Another diving catch here. Gorgeous catch. These receivers for UMass, they are just a treat to watch. They're putting on a clinic here in the second half. Well, the clock does start to turn once again. As you saw in the replay, he went down before he got out of bounds. Cohen up top. Moore almost had that one picked off, though. Andrew Moore of Colgate in position, knocked it away, almost got his hands up. Well, he got his hands on it, almost pulled it in. Well, the pump fake throws the corner, but the free safety on this play is Andrew Moore, and he closes on the football and nearly makes a, a critical interception there. Plenty of time left here, a minute and 24 seconds. A lot of time when you're talking about getting into field goal range, but you want to push that ball as close as you can, and, well, you know the Minutemen will take the touchdown if they can get it here. Second down and 10. Moore goes out wide to the right this time. Cobbs in the slot left. To the near sideline is Rancher. Cohen takes a look, goes over the middle, and that one was in and out of the hands of Dollar. Zach Dollar tried to cash in right there and just couldn't hold on to the football. That'll bring up a third down play. That was between between the eight and the one. I don't think he, I think it shocked him where this ball was. First pass breakup of the afternoon for Dollar, who has been involved in a number of tackles, five of them as a matter of fact. 
Colgate defense being asked to step up and make a big play here. One minute, 19 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Third down and 10 from the 39-yard line of the Raiders. Cohen with pressure, steps up, throws that ball in the air, and almost picked off again. Andrew Moore, second time in this drive, he's had the opportunity for an interception. And Colgate comes with a safety blitz there. Bean blitzes from the left side, and you see he comes in, puts pressure, forces the quarterback to step up. And I didn't catch the number on the defensive lineman there that they had a hold on the quarterback calling there, but a big play, and it brings up a huge fourth down. There's a good look at Moore, who pressured the quarterback. Here's your game right here. Liam Cohen has to get 10 yards. That's all he needs right now. Look at these numbers. 20 for 34 of 193 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Fourth down and 10. Here comes Colgate. Here's a pass, and J.J. Moore unable to bring that one in. It's incomplete. Turnover on downs for UMass. There was the man in coverage, Cody Williams, on that play. Big stand by the defense. Huge. Good pressure on Cohen on third down. He had a lot of time to pass prior to that in this half. They need to get pressure on the quarterback on third down. They did so. And then a big play on fourth down. And without any timeouts left for UMass, Colgate can put their knee in the ground twice. We'll take a look here. A pass out to the near sideline. And... He had fallen down already before that pass was, was ever say, made. It looked like he might may have slipped and fallen down before it was there. It was a pretty decent throw there. Yeah, no question about it. He was trying to make that step off his knees, if you will. He's trying to get back up and still move himself toward the sidelines. And as we get a whistle before the ball is ever snapped. The Colgate on their way to their first victory. All they have to do is have a good clean exchange between the center and the quarterback here. Neal on the football a couple of times. And that's all they need to do to get it done. Colgate trying to go to six and three in their last nine games against teams that are ranked in the top 25 of Division I AA. UMass was at number 15 coming into play this afternoon. And they'll kneel on the ball once here. Lee Sloan on his way to getting a victory at quarterback. A late addition. Mike Saracino with a high ankle sprain. That was suffered in last week's loss. He wasn't able to go here today. Lee Sloan, he stepped up and filled the bill admirably for that. Oh, in a big way. No question about it. Running back-wise, they kind of spread it out throughout the afternoon. J.J. Bennett got the bulk of the carries. Also, Ben Evans, the fullback, did a lot of work. Down to 35 seconds remaining. And again, Sloan kneels on the football. But give credit to UMass. Their defense kept them in the game all day long. Their offense came to life in the second half, more specifically in the fourth quarter. And Dick Biddle heads out onto the field where he will shake hands with Don Brown after the victory today. Colgate has now won 18 of their last 19 here at Andy Kerr Stadium, and they've won 29 of their last 35 games overall. It's a good afternoon for Biddle. You can see his excitement as he and the Raiders head off with a victory today. 17 to 14. That is your final from Andy Kerr Stadium. The Colgate Raiders getting the bulk of their points through their defense today. A couple of interception returns, four touchdowns, and that's the big difference in the game. Oh, without question. Well, great football game. Colgate was cruising early, got into the second half, and we had a quarterback change via injury for UMass, and Cohen, the freshman, came off the bench and really got them back in this football game. They had a great opportunity to win at the end, but the Colgate defense made a big, big stand, and that's why they walk away with the victory, and I think Coach Biddle got to that locker room before they had more time.